When I started the book, it started itself in Lower Manhattan, and I wasn't sure why, but I thought that it probably had something to do with the previous book, Pattern Recognition, having had 9-11 somewhere in, it, in its core. And I was sort of, I knew it, I felt like it was sort of coming back to ground zero. It's, it's a story about cultural changes in the United States since then. The book in which a couple really quite obscure figures managed to totally screw up the plans of a bunch of, of very established, very big time war profiteers. I want the reader to enjoy figuring out what it is these, these guys he's watching are doing. If it works, that doesn't become clear until the last few pages of the book. One of the things that I, that I describe in the book is, is people, using, people using iPod drives to transfer large amounts of, of information. They're smuggling information in, in iPod drives. The real flavor of, of real spook country is the flavor of, of rumor and of, of you heard it from a guy who heard it from, from a guy. The people Big Ed tells Hollis about who claim to have seen what's inside the shipping contain, container once on, on, board a, on board a ship. We're not sure whether they really did or not. Big End says, you know, you pay a lot of money for this kind of information and you never know. Every writer necessarily models character on their own experience. I mean, it's really like, it's all, it's all we've got. That and our observation of other, other people. That I can identif identify with Hollis's lost kind of midlife lostness or the the uh, the old man's rage at at how he sees things going in the world like they're all I think more of these characters are, are informed to some extent by who I am than I've previously been able to manage there are elements of me in in all of those characters including the the bullying fascist bad guy i kind of know that i could i kind of know that guy like we've all got our bullying fascist inner bad guy because of the way human existence on on the planet is organized i've i've always had to deal with politics and technology the core of of how politics and technology work together for me is that technology is very seldom legislated into existence. Technology will eventually take us to a point where something will change so much that beyond that point we won't be able to recognize any of it at all and whatever is left of us, of our species beyond that point, looking back won't recognize us as being the same species. I, I can imagine that if we, you know, if we came back in 500 years and there were people and, and it was, uh, there was some sort of recognizable human scenario going on, we might think it was kind of great, but that we totally wouldn't get it. There's a, a certain percentage of my readership is able to be in, in touch now through, uh, through my website and the fact that I blog. With this book, I was actually posting little bits of, with no explanation, little bits of the, the manuscript as, as I went along. And I thought of it as putting, uh, it's kind of like putting, putting pies out on the, on the window ledge <laughs> and seeing like, will they take, well, they take the pie. There was actually feedback that I was that I had corp that I had incorporated, and people would spot things that that didn't didn't work. It alleviates some degree of the the solitude of the 
of the process, maybe that's a good thing. I mean, it alleviates it for me. I'd like readers to be, to be cheered up somewhat by the, the, the course of, by the course of this book. I'm trying to pretend to myself that I'm not currently at work on a new novel, but I think I'm actually in, uh, I'm at the point where the new novel is starting to happen. It's just sort of my emotional needs are such that I don't want to feel like I'm actually doing it.